Okay, I have some more Project Euler stuff for you. Programming in C, trying to solve this, and yeah, just, just more of the same of that. Problem 2, still looks, you know, pretty easy. I'm sure the difficulty increases exponentially as you go on, but you know, right now, it's not too bad. So we have even Fibonacci numbers. Each new term in the Fibonacci sequence is generated by adding the previous two terms. By starting with 1 and 2, the first 10 terms will be 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 5, 89. So you know, 1, 2 is 1 plus 1, because that's the first term. 3 is 1 plus 2, 5 is 2 plus 3, 8, 3 plus 5, so on, so on. By considering the terms in the Fibonacci sequence whose values do not exceed 4 million, find the sum of the even valued terms. Okay. Even valued. Well, determining if a term is even valued. I want the sum again. Just do this again. My beautiful not being able to type. Um, x equals sum equals zero. Okay. The trick with this is you gotta have one, right? But the first iteration you're counting one twice, so that's the thing. And then the other thing is even valued being, um, and C it'd be, you know, modulus two. Number modulus two, so number divided by two. If the remainder is zero, then it would be even. If it's divisible by two with no remainder, it is an even number. Now in college they taught what? Temp, doing temporary switches and searches and things. That used three, we had X, X, Y, and Z, right? We have three variables. Basically use Z as a temp variable, but we can use it here as, as another thing. Um, but if we want to keep going up each time, we need a loop and that's what we need. So it'd have to be a for, or do, or a while. Um, Yeah, let's put the for loop back in. We'll start it at zero. But what do we want to increase it by each time? Uh, I'm not really sure. Let's let's just let's let's break this down here. Let's let's just break it down. We do want to continue. We do want this. So first off, we do want to ensure that x is less than or equal to four million. Okay. If we're gonna start them off at zero, um, it doesn't have a zero in there. If we started off at zero and then went to one, then the first two would be one. So we'd have to say if it's zero or one, it equals one. Or if it's zero, it would equal one. I guess we could do that. Zero. X equals one. That will only trigger one time, but I guess we'll keep it there. If it's zero, it's one. If it's not zero, then it'll be at least one. So I guess we'll keep that. Whatever, whatever. Outside of that, we'll do... It has to be even, yes. So if X modulus two is equal zero... God, I should keep these, right? Yeah. So if it's even, then we're gonna wanna add. We're gonna wanna add it to the sum. Right? Yeah. If it's less than or equal to the max, and it's zero, you want to make it one if it is zero. Otherwise, we're going to check if it's even, and then add it to the sum. Yeah, if we do y equal to x, then y would equal whatever x was, yes? So x will be one term, y will be the next term. Because on the next go around, we will, x will be different, and y will equal the previous one. That won't work. 
We have a Z for a tent variable. What are we gonna do with Z? I feel like we need it. Sum is separate. Would Z hold the sum? This is just plus equal to X, but X is gonna change and that's not necessarily gonna be right. If we have Z equal to Y plus X. If saying X is the first, Y is the second, Z will be first plus second. So that should be okay. But then Z would change. Oh, then we can use, okay, we can use Z in place of A. Okay, okay. So we'll have Z. It'll start at zero. This is right. If, I guess we'll check this for Z. Start at zero. If it's zero, make it a one. Oh, that'd have to be A. Well, I can make X equal to one. And if it's... If Z is even, then add add Z to some. Would this work? Because we're doing it down here. Z is zero, X is one. If we do one to start off, then we can get rid of this. It won't be. Let's let's try that. It's, um. Well, some we have to we have to set equal to zero though. If we use one for the numbers, maybe we have to say y to zero. I don't know. If we use one for the numbers, one will be less. That's true. One by two is zero. Um, well, it's not going to do that, is it? One remainder two won't be zero, but it will still add it to z. Um, these would still be one. How do we? Okay, so we need to change these two every time. I'm going to redo this so I think about it more. This will be one, this will be two. Two equals one. Two, well, why? We have two equal to one, they'll always be equal. But three equal to two, and then check for three. Hmm. Man, I feel really stupid. <laughs> I feel like I'm close, um, okay. We're starting at one. This isn't, this is gonna skip one. This will be, these are one to begin with. So one equals one. Z will be two. But we do want the next one to be, you know, to go into it. But this will happen from that, won't it? Or will it not? That's the next value made up of the previous two. If they're being set equal, they're not gonna go up. We need one of them to keep to keep incrementing, you know, to the next um, to the next value. Like if you think of this is x, this is y. This would be z. But to start off, it's an invisible one and a one, and then two, which is what we're adding because it's even. But then we'll have to have x move up to this one, and then y would be this two. You know, we'll have to keep moving. So how would we do that? We have to set y. One, one, two. Well, the two would be z to start off with, right? And then one, two, three. Two would be z. So we'd set x, y. Y would be equal to the previous z. This so would be y equals z. Right? I want this previous x, and then add it, and then z. Well, if we want to keep moving them up, it would equal the next in the term, right? One would go to one. So X would move from here to here to here each time. X would move up one. So X needs to be equal to the second term. Ah, not Y. Genius, I tell you. I'm just really stupid getting there. So we said the first term equal to the second. Okay, and we have the second equal to the third, and then in the middle we're, we're adding. equals y. Well, that would mess this up. If we set this equal before this, this wouldn't be right. So I think we have to do that first. Because we're taking the previous values. We're checking z. We're adding the previous. And we're setting these. 
Okay, so let's see. Let's see logically. Walk through it. One. One is less than or equal to four million. True. So, if one divisible two is has a remainder of zero, it will not. So it'll skip this. And the new value of z will be equal to start off with one plus one. So this will be two. Uh, this one will equal one. This one will equal two. After the first round, we'll have two, one, two. Second one, z is two. This will be true. True to start off. And then true, it is even. Some will be two. This will now be two plus one, as we set y equal to the previous. So this will be three. Z will be three. Okay. X would be y, which y is two. So x is two. And y is z. Y is three. So this would be x, y. After this, the first run would be x, y. Second run would be x, y. So the third run, z is three. This will not. This is false. Z will then be equal, and Y is 3. That means X was 2, right? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is still right. This will be 2 plus 3, which will be 5. Um, y was 3, so this will be 3, and then this will be 5. 3, 5, 8. I think this will work. Um, but not in an if state, we'll only run once, so we don't need an if. We need a loop. Okay, so this, this, is, this is right. This is correct. Part of my stupid puny logic, I think that's right. <laughs> um, but if we have an if statement, it'll only run one. So we do need a loop, and I have to check every time. Um, if we did a four, we'd have to increment a variable, and I don't really want to do that, because what would we increment z by? z would equal x plus y. I guess we could put that in the for loop, wouldn't we? We'd start z off at one. Would that work? Maybe it's a bit convoluted. That might work though. Let's let's see. If we do, there's there's most assuredly an easier way to do this. I'm sure, but this is what I'm doing. Even though it already says one, we're gonna set equal to one anyway. Set equal to this. Um, I don't think a do would work. Maybe do would do do while or just a regular while. I guess while it's less. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Of z. Um, we want to increment by x plus y. So if we put it in here, I believe that'll work for this. An expression can work. This is true. You run this, and then z will equal x plus y. So then we'd have to take this out, because it would already be here. This is what it would increment by. We can just do this. And then the next go, z will be this, and then you'll check against it. So I think that would work. We could take this line out. Let's see. We can do it two ways. We can do this or we can do like a while loop which would just have one check and then leave after that check is false. So the while would be like the if if it was you know less than that. We can we can make them both. We can see how this works and then we'll check the while and then if it gets the same answer then we're, we'll probably be good to check if it's right very hard to think and then say my thoughts at the same time. And I know it's it's really stupid, but okay, we'll see if it compiles. If it doesn't, we did something wrong, of course. Enter. Oh, there we go. Redeclaration of X with no linkage. Oh, I had an X. I had an int there, rather. Duh. Your declaration of X was here, I understand. Okay, that worked. So, Euler 2. Um, oh, we didn't get stupid. You didn't print anything, you idiot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we don't know what it is because it didn't print to the screen. Uh, of course. Do the same thing. We'll use sum again. There we go. Now we should actually get a freaking... Get an answer, you know? 461 37 32. Four six one three seven three two. Let's let's see first off if that was right. Four six one three seven three two. This is four five eight three four. Yay, we got it. Nice. Five hundred eighty-five thousand nine hundred seventy-ninth. 
amazing genius of the world to solve this problem. Okay. Uh, but I am a little curious to see if the while would have worked, so... Do the while as well. That'll make it even simpler, because we don't need to do this because it's already set to one, right? We'll just have to do one check. It's less than or equal. Um, we will have to add back in... this, because it is not in the, the for loop, it's now down here. But this should be the same thing. Even if if that's, you know, glaringly obvious to you, I'm not... I'm not the smartest person out there, I'm just trying to learn, you know? 4613732. It is! Okay, so you can do either way, for loop or while. Which I figured, you know, was the case, but just wanted to be sure. But here, there's problem two, the summation of all Fibonacci sequence numbers, at or below 4 million, that are even. There's your sum. Uh, but yeah, it's problem two. It, it took me a while. I'll assuredly edit out some of that, most majority of it, because I'm, you know, me thinking, and I'm not the smartest person. It takes me a while. Anyway, did that. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, cool. If you didn't, that's fine too. Um, next time... We will go over problem three. I figure we'll go in order until I hit one that I just can't do, and then maybe look at another one if it's easier. But we'll go to problem three, largest prime factor. The prime factors... I've said 13, 29. The largest prime factor of this number. Yeah, that should be fun, not knowing what the fuck to do. Yeah, we'll do that next time. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you then.